Now, Peter Nick, you began your studies as a jazz performer. Did you you did guitar and did you do singing as well? Uh, I did. I did jazz for a while. So um, I actually got into jazz when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and then that followed into being at university. But I didn't actually sing until I was basically out out of uni. And the thing about that was, while I was at uni, I really discovered a different sort of world of like instrumental music. I feel like a lot of the time when people um, you know, class themselves as I'm a singer, mm -hmm. then they start to they start to think about things as a singer, whereas I was actually learning about music in an improvisational, instrumental sort of world. So um, yeah, I started singing after. And when you, I know that you do your own recording and mixing and all those sorts of things. Yeah. Do you do that straight from the, a synthesizer, synthesizer or synthesizer? A synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually um, I I use um, uh, audio recording software like it's called Pro mm -hmm. Tools. Yeah. And um, I used to use uh, another one before when I I couldn't get Pro Tools, which is just like a different version. I just use all these anything I could find, uh, but I have a, a recording studio at at home as well. So. Um, I also have all the instruments like, you know, guitars mm -hmm. and basses and drum kits and microphones and preamps, compressors, I, the whole thing that I need uh, to make the recording process actually uh, happen. Mm -hmm. That sounds very enterprising because you didn't, did you learn composition and improvisation as well with your jazz? Well, when I was studying, um, we learned a lot about improvisation. That's that's the, the key part of what I do. As for Compositions, I mean, I, I studied the special interest music course at um, Brighton Secondary School. So when I was in high school, I was really focused on like jazz and classical, in fact, more classical. Um, and then we, we did learn about the compositional techniques of classical composers and, and also jazz composers. But the thing is that it's actually become quite a different world um, how that's all come about. Like with the pop sort of world or the R&B or rock sort of music world, it's... Um, it shares more of a similar characteristic to um, jazz music more than classical, but yeah, I just uh, the compositional sort of stuff I just sort of developed from listening and using my ears more. And you went down to Mount Gambier, you got the James Morrison Scholarship. How long were you there? Yeah, I actually, I, I was a um, uh, what do you call it? So I was runner up for the to win the award, but um, I two times that was so 2012 and 2013, I was a finalist. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was that was an interesting sort of uh, situation to be in as well because you know people from all over Australia uh, can enter this enter this competition and the interesting thing about it is that they're all amazing musicians and you kind of get there and you go wow I'm in this situation where I'm like the competition the the bar is set so high like how how am I going to come out of this or whatever but the the thing is it's really the experience that matters the most. Of course it is. Yeah, and um, obviously James Morrison's just an incredible, incredible musician, and, and so is uh, Ray Thistleweight, who's also featured there, and so is Phil Stack, and Emma Pask used to do it, and just all these people, and Gordon Goodwin's big fat band, and uh, all the people there are just great. It's great to be there. But you deviated from jazz later. Yeah, I did, and um, I wouldn't say I've necessarily... 100% deviated from it, but what I've done is I've, I've always loved R&B music and the funny thing about R&B music is it uses very similar you could say compositional techniques actually so yeah, the R&B would share the most similar but it, it's very similar in like chordal harmony so you might have the same kinds of chords in jazz music as you would R&B music it sort of stemmed from that jazz, blues, R&B, soul um, so yeah, I just I just had this theme for R&B music and love listening to John Mayer, who's a, a world-renowned pop artist. But I just had this thing in the back of my mind the whole time while I was studying. I knew I wanted to become an excellent musician. I knew that was what I wanted to do. And then, but I also used to listen to this music while I was writing arrangements for big bands in in the course. So I'm like, which one? What's it gonna be? You know? So what was it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, it just ended up happening. I, I had a, a relationship come to an end and I had all these things that happened at one time and I was in this really weird state of mind. So I just ended up writing lyrics. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not a singer though. I'm not really a singer. Like, my, my family hadn't even heard me sing until three years ago, I think. 
you know, like, and I'm 24 now, so I was just like, mm, why don't I just try this? I've always liked this, you know. You didn't even sing in the shower or anything? Nah, I still don't. I don't, I mean, yeah, I sing, but not in the shower, so, mm -hmm. uh, no, nah, it just kind of, it just sort of happened. It's one of those weird things, you know. Now, when you said things happened in your life and your relationship broke down and so on, yeah. so you started writing lyrics, mm. I was going to ask you, and it's a very cliche question, but where do you get your ideas from for your songs? Yeah, that's all right. Um, songs, songs can come out of anywhere, and I'll, I'll be honest here. Like one of the songs that the most people that had heard my music had said, "Oh, I like that one. I like that one," which is actually the title track of my first album, "Here We Be." They're like, you know, how how did you write that? Or like, that's that's just a great song. And I was like, that's funny. That's the song that I wrote at four in the morning, and it took me about ten minutes to write. Mm -hmm. It's like I just started it and just played through it like twice and that was that was the song. So it's quite it's weird sometimes, you know, you could write a song for a week or you could write one for ten minutes. And you're just walking along, you suddenly think, Oh, that's a great idea and away you go. It could it could just be anywhere. You could be on the train, you could be in the bathroom, you could be anywhere and it just comes to you. And you don't sit agonising over the terrible things that happen in your life and you must write a song about it and get it all out of my system. It does help get it out of your system as well. And I'd, you know, I'd recommend to anybody that's uh, been feeling pretty bad or has been quite emotional or something to actually listen to music and pay attention to what the meanings of songs are. I mean, it's also it's, it's nice to just listen to a song and bop your head up and down, right? whatever, but it's also nice to um, see... like. A lot of musicians have been in really tough positions in their life, mm. and you can actually listen to their story. And it's it's also in, it's nice to know that someone has been through something that you're going through, or that someone can also shine a little bit of light on your situation. So music has always been a healing sort of thing. In fact, they can be expressing in a way that you'd like to be able to express something that you're feeling. And that's right, and and they might teach you something that you really didn't know about yourself as well. Now, Peter, do you perform as well as record? Yeah, not very often. Uh, I'm, I've become much more of a studio musician, so, um, you know, I've featured on, on a couple of other uh, pieces of work over the years, um, not much, but I mainly, I mainly do my own stuff. Um, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm the studio musician, but um, in the next couple of years, I'm actually looking at branching out into the, the US and doing a few shows over there. So you'd actually go over there? Absolutely, yeah. And you'd get a, a, a visa? Yeah, I'd have to get a visa. Um, I haven't looked into every part of it at this stage, but um, there have been a bunch of people from Sydney that I've known as well that have gone over to LA or just in the US in general and um, sort of done their thing over there. So you'd have, you'd have some contacts when you got there? Uh, at this stage, I've got one or two, but... Um, you know, I'd have to contact a few people as mm -hmm. well and yeah, sort of get that sorted. I'm sure at the rate you're going, that'll be no problem. Yeah.